Okay. Morning again. We are in Shar Dalid, Parak Lamed Aleph. Um, and I stopped at a strategic point, <laughs> a shift in thinking, and I'm um, going to quickly review what we learned in the beginning of Paraklamid Aleph and go to the end of Paraklamid Aleph. What, um, what we learned in the beginning of Paraklamid Aleph was that the Limud Atayra which we've been explaining um, over the last uh, number of uh, shiurim um, in, in the Nefesh HaChaim is not just a case of learning, obviously, information or even learning holy information um, or learning um, information, which is the essence of life, um, but in fact, something deeper altogether, and that is that when HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world, he created the world using a infinite life, or ein seif. Or ein seif is not Hashem, but that is the beginning of the Shechina. And the or ein seif, as it goes through the Olamos of Atzilu Spria Yitzira into our world, going through the assembly line of life, um, like everything, manifests itself in different ways. And Kiner Mitzvah of a Torah or is the manifestation, Taira, is the manifestation of this infinite light, this Or Ein Saif, which is not just learning about the Bria, but is the Bria itself. And learning Taira is learning, is being part of the Bria itself. In other words, we're taking this Or onto ourselves and then becoming a source of light. Hence, Yisrael v'ayraisa, or Yisrael is a lashon of Ar, v'kut shabrichu, chadhu. It's really one big streaming line from HaKadosh Baruch Hu to um, our world and to us, to us and our world, I should say. And that, in essence, um, spreading that light is the, um, is the, the, the meaningfulness and the purpose of life, because HaKadosh Baruch Hu created a world for his purposes, uh, and there he created trees and kangaroos and monkeys and grass and uh, weather systems and us, he created us, but we are a Bria with just part of this Bria of Hashem's world and with the, with the Chachma Sashem, Salam Alikim, and of course with the Bechira um, uh, and and the, therefore we're part of the creation. Our whole purpose in life, the whole raison d'etre is to make Hashem's light Further, this is called Malchus, Shina. That's what it's called. So at the beginning of Paraklam at Aleph, we learned to Mizad Tam, Gam King. And because of all of this, Esa Katera, he mechaperes al kol ha'avoyne shal ha'nefesh ha'chotes. We learned that Limud HaTera, learning to Esa Katera, Esa Katera, is mechaper kol ha'avoyne. Which means, if we have avoyne, the Esa learning Torah is Mechaper on the Avon. So much so, as the Gemara says in the end of Benachis, my deceives us had Torah, la oila, la mincha, la chatas, that the Chumash tells us, uh, just told you everything about the carbon oila, and about the carbon mincha, and carbon chatas. And the, the Gemara comes says that Zois had Torah is Medayak in the word Zois had Torah. That um, somebody who's learning Tyra doesn't need these karbanas. And it goes a number of sources that you don't need the karbanas. Um, the end of the paragraph. When I really want is Tyra. And the Tanchuma, all right, who noise have when the same shall Israel shall terrorish by noise have when the same shall Israel. So, um, pointed out last week what, what, what we're saying here with a number of Marmakimus, all the way up to the next page, is that Torah stands, Limud Hatar, we're not talking about Limud Hatar, Asik Batara, stands in the place of Karbanis. So, um, 
comes down and he asks the question. So uh, if it stands in the place of Karbanas, what do we have to uh, do the whole Yom Kippur thing? Why don't we just learn on Yom Kippur? It's a bim kaim Karbanas. Or does that mean when the base of Mikdash was kaim and will, or will be makaim? Um, Bezer Hashem, that we, we don't have to bring Karbanas. We could just learn Torah. What, is, what does it mean? So um, I explained that obviously what the Torah says, the Torah says, you, bring, you do a, you, what, what does it have here? You bring a carbon. That, that, and even nowadays, uh, you're Isaac, but Torah is Karbanas. You say Karbanas, you're davening and Stila, you bring a carbon. But um, we're, we're talking about specifically the part of the carbon, or more, or more specifically, the part of the tshuva process, which talks about kapara. So meaning like on Yom Kippur, we say, slach lanu, machal lanu, kaper lanu. So slach lanu and machal lanu has to do with our relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And we explain that, okay, you can better the relationship, but you've still ingested the toxin. You still drank the Ajax. And, and now you have this chet in you uh, similar to if one uh, hurts another person. So even if you apologize, even if you, uh, 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 you know, rectify the relationship, hard to say that the words that you said or the, or the deed that you did or if you robbed me, that that's going away so quickly because that's the toxic. So kapara is the part of tshuva, which is the cleansing part. It actually takes the, um, the toxic chet Besides for the slicha and the mechila, it actually takes the toxic chet and cleans it out. That's what kapara means. L'chaper al kol And we know that uh, that's what the word kapara means. Uh, kapara, kapara means to clean out. That's, that's what it means. And that's the part of the karbanas the Torah could do. Why? Because, uh, you know, the Rabbat explains that how, do, how does a carbon work? Uh, it's well-known, well-quoted, off-quoted Ramban. How does kapara work in a carbon? Because a person brings a carbon and he sees the ash and he sees the animal burning and he sees the he says this should have been me, and it it, it touches one very very deeply inside, um, emotionally and psychologically, and that's the kapara. Tyra does more than that. Tyra Bamish gets into it's like a medication that that goes into the body and into the mind and into the heart and into the neshama and just cleanses out the whole thing, a detox, a spiritual detox. Um, and you can become like a whole, like even, even, if, even if one did chatoyim in front of Hashem, it could be as if you didn't do chatoyim. It could, it could be a balchuva, a balchuva is uh, as if you never did an aver. So that's the koach of a kapar of a carbon, and that's the koach of Torah. That's what we learned last week, right? Everybody and was then, And then yeah, theoretically... Does that also apply to the Ben Amachavera? So that's the whole, the Tamar Tvara in, in the Parak Aleph um, makes exactly this point, Rabbi Yaakov, that, that, um, that we are created at Salam Alakim. So it means to say that when somebody comes to us to rectify a relationship, it's not only the Slicha Machila, you know, Slicha, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. I apologize, but there's this, there there has to be an aspect of kapara and very interesting. What well, now that you mention it, that the nefesh Achayim, when he says that he gives a lot of different chazals, and one of them he says is that that the Torah is like the aron, right? And the aron is noise as avon noise shall others. And then the yud gimel midos we say Hashem is a noise avon. So noise avon we always explain in Tamar Tvara means noise avon. What is he? What is he? He carries our chet. What does that mean? He carries our chet. So, like my explanation in Tamar Dvara was, you know, it's like, it's like, uh, you know, if one gets uh, overdrawn in the bank and just can't pay their bills, so the bank bounces your checks, etc. But if you are, uh, you have a serious relationship with the bank and you've done a lot of business and they know you're just going through a hard time right now, the bank will carry you. Noise avain. Hashem will carry that chet. And, and that's what says the Tamar That's what we have to do. We have to carry the debt that the person owes us. Kapara is nachmer, both in Benam Lomakim and in Benam Lachavere. That kapara means I'm erasing. I'm, I'm, act, I'm actually erasing the chet. And to our point, that's what karbanas are all about. That's what the experience of bringing a carbon is all about. 
but even even a better solution is limud atayra to esek atayra. Again, not information. Besides, for all that, you know, like tamachacham, but it, it actually has this um, ability to cleanse. Which, if you learn Torah, not that I've had that much experience in this, but if you if you're zocha to learn Torah, even for a few minutes lishma, you can just feel a, a, a cleansing uh, going on. That's that's the importance of. And and um, we mentioned last week, and I want to mention again that you know Chazal point out. That limud atayra hamar shabai machzira lamuta. So, <laughs> mean means you know, you know it's like a litva shakira process. That you know you can tell people the codes. You can you can uh, put tefillin on them, get them to do mitzvahs, uh, sing a song with them. All good, all good. Nobody nobody's against that. But if you learn Torah with somebody, somehow or another, miraculously. Hamar Shabai Daika, the R A Saif actually gets um, put into the person you're learning with, illuminates the person you're learning with, and as such, Yachzir Lamutav will create a whole different uh, aspect of Chuva. This is a miracle of Limanatara. It's a miracle of Limanatara, and, and it works. Um, you know, I'm a, I, I, I was a Kiru person for many, many years. I don't do too much Kiru anymore, but I was a Kiru person anywhere. The, the system was a very simple system. It was never to try to be Makar of anybody or try to get people to change. It was never any agenda in it. It was simply to learn Tyra with people that uh, that never learned Tyra before and couldn't care less about it. That was, why should I study Torah? You know, like that kind of thing. And we saw, we saw, you know, we could, we could, we could write a book of case studies how how a mar shabai achzira elamutav somehow or another, with that terrorism, the the next business deal they're making, they're making a different type of a decision. The the, the next word they're saying before they they uh, hurt another person becomes somehow terror. How mar shabai? There's a certain cleansing thing that goes. It doesn't happen like every other uh, you know supplement. It doesn't happen overnight necessarily, but um, over a period of time, we see the mar shabai achzira elamutav. It's all the same concept. Of Torah b'makim karbanas or Torah b'makim kapara that's actually changing who I am. And if you do it right, you get to the point of or zaru al atzadik ule yishrei leiv simcha. We were zayichet to see tzadikim that that almost a, a physical light came came out from them. That's the or ein seif that you're seeing there. A certain or nismala kol abayis oira. There, 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 there's such a thing. Now, um, if you get like, if you go through, um, anybody want to say anything before I get to the, to the safer of this today's learning? If you go, if you go a few paragraphs in, where it says "va'amru oid b'perek sheni de brachas," and Nefesh Chaim here quotes quotes a Gemara in Brachas Tazayin Amud Aleph. And it's repeated in Tanat Ve'elio, Seder Elio Rabba, Parachafei. And this is actually quite a famous Gemara, Rashi brings it. That, Lama nismachu aholim lin cholim. Dixiv kin cholim nitayu ka'aholim nata Hashem. It says in the Torah, in Cholim Nitoyu Ka Olim Nata Hashem. We'll go back to the passage in a second. Let me just finish the sentence. Moy Marlacha, this comes to teach you. Man Cholim Malinus Adam Mituma Litahara Af Oalim, meaning Torah, Malinus Adam Mikaf Choiva Lakaf Schus. Now, first of all, I just want to point out something that the casual learner will not notice. And that is that this whole time we've been talking about carbonos. Carbonos is the Indian of ash, fire. So it's a hot process. It's a fiery process. Um, take an animal, put it on the mezbeah, you light the fire. It's, 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 a, it's a fire, it's a process of ash. And that's what we're talking about. Carbonos, the tyra, ash, tyra is a process of Aish, and if you will, it's a kind of like detoxifies by burning out the Averis in the system. At this moment, the Nefesh is taking a shift, a paradigm shift, 
And he says, let's stop talking about Aish and let's start talking about Mayim. Kinecholim, they tell you, Nechayim are rivers. It means to say that we, we've just, I don't know if everybody notices it, we've just moved in this one sentence, the Amruoid, we've moved from talking about Aish to talking about Mayim. What's the difference between Aish and Mayim? The, the different Aish can destroy one's house, God forbid, and so can Mayim. Aish can kill you, so can Mayim. Aish can give life, so can Mayim. Um, what, what's the difference? It's two completely different mechanisms. Whereas Aish is their opposites. Aish and Mayim are, are opposites. Uh, Aish dries up water and Mayim puts out Aish. Uh, the, the two, Aish and Mayim, except, unless it's in the Barad and Mitzrayim, cannot survive together, Aish and Mayim. Um, because they have two opposite tehunais. The tuna of Aish is simsum. The tuna of Mayim is hispashtus. If you, if you, Aish will take, it can take something which is um, 100 feet high and reduce it to two feet high. If you, if you take something into a chemistry lab, into a Bunsen, and put it on a Bunsen burner, you are reducing it to its finest components. Aish is mitzamsim. It brings down, gets rid of all the fluff, everything that doesn't need to be there, and brings it down to a pile, a heap of ashes. That's what Aish does. Mayim is hafuch. Mayim, Mayim comes and it takes something which is this big and makes it that big. It destroys by his pashtus. It connects things together that, don't, that aren't supposed to be connected. It's, it's, it's suffocating because it's too much. It's, uh, Mayim is the exact opposite of Aish. Two different tchunas, yes? We're moving from the world of Tzimtzum, which is Aish or Karbonis, to the world of Mayim. Karbonis are with Aish. What takes place with Mayim? So the mikvah. Nisucha Mayim also. Nisucha Mayim. Well, let's take the simple thing. Tahara comes about through Mayim. The Tahara comes about by going into a mikvah. And we need to talk about that more, but just to understand the difference between Aish and Mayim. And here, very deep thing, that Nefeshachayim now points to us to a Gemara in Brachas. Let, let me just, the Gemara is talking about the Pasuk in Parshish Balak, which Bilam said, and the Anshay Knesset Hagdoyla popularized. Bilam said, Matoivu o halacha Yaakov, Mishkenai secha Yisra, in Cholim mitoyu ki ganois ale nahar ka aholim nota Hashem ka rozim ale moyim. So Bilam looked at Klai Yisra with the purpose of cursing them, and his curse turned into a blessing. And he spoke about a number of things over here. He spoke about Ohalim. Actually, he spoke about four things. Nechalim, Ganois, Oyalim, and Arozim. That's what Bilam spoke about in this. In this. He starts talking about water. Frank the Gemara, like, What's the what's with Bilam's nevuah? How does he get from Ohalim, which is he saw the tents of Kla Yisrael, to being Madama them to Nechalim, which are the rivers of Kla Yisrael? So Rashi explains before we get to the Gemara for a second. That when when Bilam saw the the um, the tents and the dwellings of Klai Yisrael, 
Um, Rashi says that there's two things that, that he actually saw. He saw, first of all, the way we live, our lifestyle, that we respect people's privacy. And like the Gemara and Baba Vasra says, Samach, lay amdu pischeim, zu zu, lay amdu zu zu. Rashi says, Al shira pischeim she'enon mechuvan aizem muzeh. But then Rashi says another part, Shad, Matoiba alecha Yaakov, Ra ohalecha. He saw oil shiloi at the base of Mikdash. Shemakrivin barham karbanois lechaper alehem. Look how beautiful this is in, in the Nefesh Achayim. That what first, the first thing that Bilam was commenting on was karbanois, base of Mikdash. Base of Mikdash. And by the way, I think even the first shot while I'm here, has to do with carbonice, meaning like if we're not machaving our windows one to the other, because I hear this all day, like, you know, these, these things, you know, this guy built a window right across from my porch, like, what the heck? <laughs> so, uh, you know, do you talk to the guy at the window? So I'm not allowed to have a window. <laughs> I'm not allowed to have a window. I'm not allowed to have a door. But Ra Yisrael, Bilam saw Kla Yisrael, which were being mevat there, um, maybe their viewer and on their luft and on their air and on their, you know, and, uh, to respect the privacy of another person. I'm not getting into the halacha, but the, the, it's, it's an interesting thing. It's giving up something of yourself for, for other people. That's what the whole Hilfa is about. But more to the point, he saw the Beis HaMikdash, Makriven Karbanas. Where do you see the Beis HaMikdash? Didn't, they didn't have any Beis HaMikdash that he saw. That uh, It could have said that he saw the Mizbeach, maybe. But what it says, what it says that he saw was the Mishkan Shiloh. He saw the future. This was a Navu. He saw, he saw the, the Shiloh, Mishkan Shiloh, and he saw the Beis HaMikdash. And he also saw the Harbin of it. So that's the Ahalim. But then he saw in his Navua Nechalim. Rashi explains, what are these Nechalim? That you know, you know, here we live in Beit Shemesh, many of us. So, you know, what happens in Beit Shemesh? We have uh, Nachal Dolev, Nachal Yale, Nachal Katla, Nachal, what, what are all those? Uh, like there, there isn't a drop of water like around, right? So what's what's all these Kinechalim um, Nitayu? So the shot is that if you'll travel along the coast of the Mediterranean, you'll find Nachal Katlab, you'll find Nachal Achish, you'll find Nachal Yale, You'll find all these nachlois, which are miraculously, I would say, the salt water of the Mediterranean somehow miraculously turning into fresh water. I'm sure a scientist here has a scientific approach to it, but I'm just saying it's so full of it's a miracle. And then those rivers, there's rivers. You could go to Ashdod, for instance, and see nachal lachish. So, so right off the beach, you have uh, the beach waves and everything, and then you have nachal Lachish, fresh water, you could drink that water. And, and, and Lachal Lachish starts traveling through Eretz Yisrael to irrigate the fields all over Eretz Yisrael. This is Hashem's design for Eretz Yisrael, Eretz Nachalim Mayim, that, that you have these Nachalim which are spreading out from the, from the main source of water. And the, uh, there's a combination, which, which I want to talk about, of right there taking place a Mayim Tachtoinim, there are new Mayanois that come of water, which is fresh water, obviously, it's coming from a Mayan. And then there's water from the Mediterranean, and then there's water from the rain. But somehow or another, it all comes together, and it, and it travels through Eretz Yisrael. And Bilam said, I'm seeing, I'm seeing in my vision these rivers that come and they irrigate the entire land of Eretz Yisrael. Frank de Gemara, what many are you talking about, Ohalim? In the next second, you're talking about Nechalim. So my Indian, to use the phrase of the year, my Indian Shemitah, it's Elohar Sinai. What, what, how does that work? So it says the Gemara, and that's, that's the context. So to like, like, like let's learn, not learn the Gemara like Amaratzim, like it's Amal we'll look at the Pasuk inside. And it says the Gemara is like this, Kinchalim nitayu ka'aholim nata Hashem. We're talking about Nacholim, not only in the physical sense that they're able to irrigate the land of Israel, but a Nachal is also a source of Tahara. So besides for giving physical sustenance to the entire land of, Ar of Israel, it's also giving purity to the land of Israel. There's also a spiritual sustenance which goes through the land. 
same thing as with Tyra, oil Tyra. Water is what makes up a mikveh. This is talking about water of the heart. It's talking about tears. This mayim is also refers to a source of tahara and taira. So taira does the same thing as the mayim. You could see the taira is metaher poshe Yisrael. As the puzzle we say so much on Yom Kippur from Yechesko. So what do we just do? Let's, let's keep a health cup over here. What do we just do? We just moved from Korbanois, which is Kapara, to Mikva Mayim, which is Tara. So we moved from Kapara to Tara. We just changed the subjects on us. There really should be a little subtitle here, but there is not one. <laughs> we moved is to it Tara. stronger than the Kabbalah? Is that taking you to a different realm and it's even stronger? Lanias Daiti Nira, that if fire is the big detox and gets rid of the Chet, Tahara gives us a whole new life. What, what, like, what now? I got rid of the chet. But this is like the next madrega. The next madrega after getting rid of the chet is re restoration of the relationship. Look at the fact that, Rabbi Yaakov, look at the fact that a woman goes to the mikvah before a new life is created. And look at the fact that a baby is comes into this world in Mayim. And the baby starts to come into this world when the water breaks. And you know, and Mayim, Mayim is a Dover Hamatahir. So it's what does that mean? It means to say it's a whole new life, it's a whole new start. So two different functions, the function of karbanas, slicha, machila, kapora, and then tara. In the, in, in the, in the words of the, 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 the Masul Sisharim quotes, precious may be lide tara. So precious is tzimtzum, and tara is a whole new life. Tara may be lide chasidus, chasidus may be lide kedusha, etc. So it's actually quite, it's actually what, quite, quite um, potent here, because what we're saying here, going back to Torah, is this or ain't seif, which is coming upon us. First of all, has like a double function. First of all, it can get rid of the the the, you know, today we want to get rid of the virus, but the, let's say we're getting rid of the a virus, all the a virus. Um, but then, like, okay, so wh wh where am I on Motsu Yom Kippur? <laughs> like, got rid of the Averis. And the answer is, no, fresh start. Isn't water the symbol of freshness? Fire is not. So is Tyra, is Tyra symbolizing water or is Tyra symbolizing fire? Both. So we find Tyra all Tyra the time. We find Tyra is Aish all the time, Harsinai. Ritcha de Raisa. Yeah, Ritcha de Raisa. Aish just love it. Raisa de Kamaraska Bay. But no, but, it, but something else, like, you know, all through Chazal, like when Yon, Rabbi Yonas and Ben Uziel learned Tyra, so Kol Oif that flew over his head, Miyan Nisra, Aisha Tyra. And, Mimino ish das lamo. Oh, perfect. Thank you. 
but even even as far as Chazal, you, you find that uh, when Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai, um, the Gemara Chulin, when he left Yerushalayim, he learned the Ma'aser Merkava. So Sichicha Ba Eish Min Hashemayim Sichicha Kol Ha'Ilanos, and we find even by the bris of Elisha ben Avuya that Sivava uh, Kol Habayis Eish, and that. That was what the story was with Elisha ben Avuya when he was born in his breast. Torah is always Aish. But then comes the Gemara and says, or the Pasuk really, the Torah is also mine. <laughs> so, you know, it's it's like first you get rid of the garbage, but then build me up to give me a whole new life. So Torah does that also, which we know this is true. So Hamar Shabayachzir Lamutav is like a, uh, this is the Nefesh Achayim's paradigm shift. It takes you, you know, a, a, a one, two. It gets you from, okay, um, I'll, 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 I'll weaken that, sur me ra, I say time, you have a whole fresh new life, water, refreshing. When do we use the term kapara and tahara? What is there a difference? What is the difference? So that's so exactly what I'm explaining. So kapara, kapara is cleaning out the bad and tahara is adding good, freshness. But you know what? The, this is what we say a lot on Yom Kippur: "Vizarakti alechem bayim tahirim utahartem." The pasuk that he quotes here in Yecheskel: "Vizarakti alechem bayim tahirim utahartem." That Yom Kippur, like, is interesting. It's all about kapara. But uh, uh, Rabbi Kiva came along and he, he pointed out to this pasuk that there's also on Yom Kippur an aspect of tahara. If me atenatarem mi matayer haschem. There's also an aspect of, of Tahara, which is Ashrechem Yisrael, that I'm giving you Tahira, where Rabbi Kiva was the semel of, of Tahira, of Tahira Shabbat Peh. Hashem is giving us Tahira, learn the Tahira. I'm thinking about a lot about what, um, what Rabbi Akiva said. I just want to put it out there. Um, he said to the Roman that if... if you know, if, if we don't learn Tyra, then we're like fish without water. Uh huh. Like, like fish without water. It, it, it's, you know, the robot said, like, you know, what do you, like, stop with the Tyra already. Don't you see they're killing you? They're burning you. Just take us, our Uge Malchus. You know, like, it, it doesn't, doesn't make any sense because, like, it, like this is our life. So, so Rabbi Kiba was, was Bidama to, to Mayim. Even though they were all burnt to death, you know, I mean, it was it was Madama to to mine. So something very um, important and interesting to know here about Tyre, very Lamaisa. Now, just if, um, I have a couple minutes. I just want, I want to share something with you here on the subject Mayim, on the subject of Mayim, and maybe Aish. That um, something which is. Um, there's Rebitzak Isaac Chover. Rebitzak Isaac Chover. That's, that's my namesake, Chover, I Haber. So he was the um, Talmud Muvuk of the Talmud Muvuk of the Gra. Um, big um, big Makubal and a big Paisik. Rebitzak Isaac Chover, the Griya the Chover. And by the way, like, um, I don't believe he's any relationship to me because he was a real litvak and a, we're a real Galatianer. <laughs> but uh, happy to have his name, Chaver. Rabbi Zagai a Chaver, um, who, by the way, wrote a sefer called Pischei Sha'arim, which is probably the best Hagdama to Kabbalah that has been written over the whole, all the generations. Um, Rabbi Zagai a Chaver, and it's the Kabbalah of the Gra. It's, uh, you know, like most people, Get their Kabbalah either from your Makubal from the Arizal or through Hasidus. This is like Kabbalah Sagra was Rabbi Sagai's a clever. So, you know, it's a sort of Litvish Kabbalah, which is, but it's a beautiful, clear safer. But, anyways, he's, he speaks about, he speaks, he has a safer called Or Hatayra. And in the Or Hatayra, he speaks about um, the creation of the world. And he says that we all know. That there was Mayim El Yoinim and Mayim Tachtainim. Yeah, it says in Chumash. So the Seder Advarim is, 
I don't know if we ever, if we dwell on this pasuk too much, but it's, you know, there's the Mayim El Yoinim, that's in the Shemayim. There's the Mayim Tachtoinim, that's what's going on in this world. And between them is the Rakia HaShemayim. There's a Mechitza. And then the Torah says, so there's Mayim El Yoinim, there's Mayim Tachtoinim. And between them are Rakia. So Makesher, Mayim El Yoinim, Mayim Tachtoinim, if there's a, if there's a Rakia in between. So the answer is ve'ed yala min ha'aretz. That the ma'im el yoinim, I'm sorry, the ma'im tachtonim can evaporate in a way that they can create a cloud or an aid. And that aid, as he explains it so beautifully, is where the ma'im tachtonim mixes with the ma'im el yoinim and then rains down in the rain cycle to give us a combination of ma'im el yoinim and ma'im tachtonim. Just What's, what's, the, the, but he says something very, very important and very, very special. And that is that we have to understand that the Mayim El Yoinim is not rain. It's not wet. It's not water. In all of the worlds, Atzilo, Spria, Yitzira, Nasir, which I said at the beginning of this year, that in all of the worlds, um, everything comes out, the same thing that Hashem created comes out differently. In other words, like uh, there's no people in the world of Bria. Um, there's Malachim, here's Neshamas, here's Malachim, here's people. The way water, Mayim, comes out in the, in the El Yoinim, in the upper worlds, is as Tyra. That's the fact. So what happens is that there's the Ruch, it's, a, it's okay, everything manifests itself in a different way. So in the Gashmius world, there is Tachtoinim, Mayim Tachtoinim, which is water, which is irrigating the fields, like Willem said. But that same thing is in the Mayim El Yoinim in the form of Torah. And the Eid Yalam in Aretz is the Irvuvia of Mayim El Yoinim and the Mayim Tach Yes? Um, and and the, the, the job of the person is to connect those things and then give that kind of Kedushan or into the world. And Chayn, you know, with, with the rain and the same thing with Torah and with Kedusha and with everything else. Yeah, Rabbi Yitzhak, what do you say? I'm wondering about <clears throat> Noah and Moshe. I'm hearing that Noah brought good. down brought down things when Geshem, and Moshe brought it down as as Ruchnius. It was the same Koach, the same Gilgal, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. What about Rabbi Hutner? What do you think? Do you want to say something? We're not saying it. Okay. Let me, let me, um, I'm taking a little risk here in the next three minutes. I just want to share something personal. That um, from my house to the shul is between three and three and a half minutes time. I mean, I know exactly how many uh, meters it is. About three minutes, three and a half minutes time. And I, I just made a decision a few weeks ago that like, you know, I always come to show right on time or try to, or maybe even a minute late, but like all the um, preliminary prayers, like I don't uh, get to say, cause I'm keeping up with the Tzibur. Um, So I'm going to say some of those to us in the three minutes between my house and show. Okay. Personal thing, you know, so it's 6.30 in the morning. I, I decided that, that evolved um, to, um, I spend the entire three and a half minutes every single day, Blin Ender, saying Asher Yotzar. So um, you know, Asher Yotzar is part of the Birchas HaShachar. We make Asher Yotzar after you go to the bathroom and thank God for that mess. But even if you didn't go to the bathroom, you say Asher Yotzar. In the morning, because it's it, Ashriyatzer is not just about um, being able to go to the bathroom, but imi paseachachamehem, or you say mechamehem. It's talking about your whole body, like your kidney is opening and closing, your blood vessels, your heart, your um, your liver, every everything is is paseachachamehem, or you say mechamehem. The the miracle of 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 life is the psicha, you know, the pulse of life, and and um, even though the makam chalois of that, you make this bracha. After you, um, after you go to the bathroom, but the, which is appropriate time. But all that is is a t- it's a it's a makam chalaisa making the bracha. The bracha, the kavana of the bracha, 
is on all of life. And that's just an important thing to, for everybody to know. Um, now, it's interesting, the Lush and what I'm on every day, try I'm on a different thing. But first of all, um, we have the world of Yitzira, we have the world of Bria. And then we make this odd comment. Um, it's so, um, what does the Kisei HaKavit have to do with this uh, little speech here, with this bracha? Got to go all the way to the Kisei HaKavit to say, <laughs> like, what's the... Yeah. Isn't it a reference to Gavani? Hmm? Is it a reference to Tefila in general? We're talking, we're thanking Hashem for this Bria. So why the Kisei HaKavit? What is, how does that have to do with tefillah? There's, 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 uh, it's some, somehow tefillah is the, is the closest that a human being can get to a Kaddish Baruch Hu in this, in this instantiation or, you know, I don't know. I, okay. I just, so let me, let me, let me explain what I think this means. That when, when a person's created in the space face daily, that's why we say Modani every morning. So, Hashem um, creates the neshama. The neshama is created. The neshama comes from the higher worlds, but it's it's um, it gets attached to a body by the kisei hakavod. The kisei hakavod is the oil of neshamas. Take my word for it. Um, so what what we're actually thanking Hashem for here is that thank you once again this morning. That you created this person, me in the case, the case it's in with a, with a lot of chachma. And when you made a person, when you, we are real, we are realivened in the morning, and the guf and the neshama are mischaber. And when you did so, you did it with such chachma, right there at the kisei covered when you put the neshama into the guf. Let alone the whole day. The whole body has to work. You can go for an hour without going to the bathroom, but your whole body has to work. Your heart, your blood, everything, everything has to work. So this took place. What we're talking about here is taking, taking place, the references by the Hebrew health, if you will, by the Hebrew of the goof to the neshama. We're not all neshama. We're not all goof. We're a neshama with a goof. That took place in the Kisya Kavit. So we reference the source of life, which is the Kisya Kavit. And that's why, by the way, um, immediately after we finish saying Ashi Yatzer in the morning, we say, Again, So what we're, and then we say, that Hashem gives, gives Chius, Lifgar and Mason. Meaning, like that, that hold the two brachas together, and even if they're not together in your sitter, you're supposed to say them together. Those two brachas that are together in your in, in davening, so they're they're giving us the essence of life, explaining and thanking Hashem for the essence of life, the goof, the neshama, and the chibur of the goof and the neshama. Why am I saying this now? Not because I wanted to talk about Ashi Yatzar. I'm saying this now, which is very important for us adults to be mechavet. And the older you get, the more you're machab. But but uh, the what what I what I'm saying is that what what we're talking about is the same thing as the Mayim El Yonim and the Mayim Tachtoinim and the A Dialamina Arts. We're talking about the Chibor of Shemayim Ba'aretz. And the and so so the the Chelik of Mayim, as Yitzchok says, uh, Moshe Rabbeinu came about through Mayim, but he ended up giving through Eish. You know, Eish Dos Lamay. Right, that's what you said, David. Right, but but um, it ends up with Mayim. Now, to summarize the whole thing, everything that I just said in the last forty-five minutes, the Mayim refers to the new life, the new life of Moshe, 
in the life of a baby, a new life of Tahara. And Tahara is where we're going from Simpsum to Hispastus, taking light and spreading that light and giving it out to other people. Chesed is Daima Lamayim, right? What happened? They had the Akedo, which was all about Aish. Bilvavi Mishkan Evna. And then immediately after the Akeda, Parshas Vayera, the last um, Eila Toldais Nachar Achi Avram. <laughs> we have the 12 Shvatim, if you will, Rashi says, that came from Nachar. What happened immediately after Yitzhak went through the Akeda? Rivka was born. How's our state in Rashi? Iker Is this connected to, to the fact that immediately after you wake up in the morning, you have to wash your hands with water? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and sleeping has to do with Asian. There's so much to talk about here. But, but you see that as soon as there was the Asian of the Akeda, there was immediately the birth of Rivka. And by the way, what was Rivka doing when she was chosen as a Kala for Yitzhak? Drawing water. Drawing water. Ushafta Mayim Besasim Mimayna Yeshua. It, it, it was Dafka all about water. Hatina Kadech, feed the Gemalim, the Mayim, the Hispastus, the Chesed. That's 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 what it was all about. Okay, we can go on for on and on, but Mir Hashem, we won't. Um, uh, tomorrow's Rosh Chodesh, tonight is Rosh Chodesh. I wish everyone a good Chodesh and um, and Hatzlacha, good Shabbos. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you. Thank you.